Hi, welcome to Moomoo Math. Today we're going to look at ways to use dot products. In particular, we're going to find the angle between two vectors. So given two vectors, okay, let's say that our vectors are 2, negative 1, and negative 3, 6, and we drew those vectors. What is the angle between these two vectors? So we can find angle measures using this method, and then we're going to decide if two vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So let's start with our first concept. We're going to use a dot product to find the angle between two vectors using this formula. The formula is cosine of theta is equal to the dot product on top to over, divided by the magnitude of each of the vectors. So I'm going to sketch this first so you can get a sense of what this looks like. The first vector is the vector 3, 1. So there's our first vector, u. The second vector is negative 4, 2. So just sketching it, you can see the vector. Now, this angle between the two vectors is an obtuse angle. So that's going to be a little bit interesting. We're going to talk about the different scenarios in a few minutes, but it is an obtuse angle. Now, let's plug into our formula so you can see how this works. We're going to take the dot product on top, so the cosine of angle theta is equal to the dot product of 3, 1, the vector, and negative 4, 2, all divided by the magnitudes, so the magnitude of each. Now I'm going to go ahead and find the magnitude of each one of these. So to find the magnitude, I need to know the length. And to find magnitude, we just use the Pythagorean theorem. So the first one is just 3 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared, which is that magnitude's distance. 9 plus 1 is 10. So that means the first magnitude, or the magnitude of u, is just the square root of 10. So I'm going to divide that by the square root oops, of 10. Didn't draw very well. Times the magnitude of the second vector. Well, negative 4 quantity squared plus 2 squared, that's going to give me c squared, or the magnitude. So that's 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. And there's my second magnitude. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to simplify it for now because I, I've got some more operations to do. So I'm just going to leave it as a square root of 20. So now let's calculate the dot product because that's what's on top. So I multiply the first components, so that's negative, whoops, negative 12, and I'm going to add to it the product of the second one, 1 times 2 is 2, all divided by square root of 10 times the square root of 20, which is really just the square root of 200. So let's simplify all this. So I have negative 10 on top, and I have the square root of 10 times 20, which is 200. Now, this is all equal to cosine of theta. So let's divide this with a calculator, and then we're just going to use the inverse button to actually find the angle. So notice we've got a negative here. So let me bring up my calculator, and we'll divide and get the decimal. Let's see, we've got negative 10 divided by the square root of 200. And that answer is negative 0 0.707. Now we want to find the angle, so I'm going to do the inverse cosine of that answer. So second answer to pull that answer up and it's 135. So this ended up being, what was it, negative 707, yeah. 
negative 0.7071. Okay, and theta ended up being a really pretty angle. It's 135 degrees. There we go. So that is how you find the angle between two vectors. It's a very simple formula. You just need to understand the numerator is the dot product. The denominator is the magnitude of each vector, and it's that product of the magnitudes. Then once you get that, you just use your inverse button. So I just did the inverse cosine of that ratio, negative 10 divided by root 200, and it ended up being a nice pretty angle of 135. Okay, so let's talk about the possibilities for theta or cosine theta. Okay, if cosine theta um, is 1, that means the two vectors have the same direction. So if you get 1, we know that cosine of 1 has an angle of uh, 0. That means they're going the same direction. If cosine theta falls between 0 and 1, that means it is an acute angle, which makes sense because remember, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, and that would be a positive ratio. If we get zero for, for our dot product divided by the magnitude, where do we know cosine theta is zero? Well, cosine theta is zero at pi halves, which is also 90 degrees. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means the two vectors must be perpendicular. So we have a 90 degree angle if we have the ratio of the dot product divided by the magnitude of zero. Now, what if it is negative? And this is like the example we just did. We had negative 10 divided by negative root 200, and it ended up being an obtuse angle. Why? Because we know in quadrant 2, cosine is negative. Ha, ah, yeah, that's starting to make sense now. Okay, so you're going to have an obtuse angle. And then if cosine theta is negative 1, that means our vectors are going in the opposite direction. Because where do we know cosine theta is negative 1? At pi. And that means one vector is going this way, and there's 180 degrees and the other vectors going the other way. So it's kind of interesting. If we get a negative one, they're going opposite directions. If we get a positive one, they're going the same direction. If we get zero, they're perpendicular, they're at a 90 degree angle. If cosine theta is positive, we have an acute angle. And if cosine theta is negative, it's an obtuse. And that's how you can classify using the formula. It's kind of an interesting little concept. Okay, let's try one more set of these, okay? We want to find the angle, and notice this one's acute. You can draw it and kind of see. That means this cosine theta is actually going to be a positive number. So let's run through this formula. So cosine theta is equal to the dot product. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. That's going to be 12 plus 3 times 5 is 15. So in my numerator, I'm going to get 27. And then in my denominator, I need to find the magnitude. So to find the magnitude, really that's just the hypotenuse. Well, I hope you recognize if this is 4 and this is 3, what do we know the magnitude must be? And the answer is 5. That is just a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the magnitude of u is 5. Now v is not quite so easy because we have a 3 and a 5. So we're going to have to work through the Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared. 9 plus 25 is 34. So we end up with just the square root of 34. So that's our product in the denominator. Now we can just grab our calculator and find that value. So in the numerator, 
I believe we had 27, that's right. So we had 27. And we're going to divide that by the product of 5 times the square root of 34. Oops. Let's go back and write that 34 in there. And that should give us 0.926. And notice that is a positive value. We just had a positive divided by a positive. And then we want to find the inverse cosine to find the angle. And our answer is 22.166. So the angle theta is equal to 22.17. I'll just round it off to a tenths position. And that makes sense because it should be acute. So there's our formula. So you can see how to find the angle between two vectors. Now let's keep going. Let's talk a little bit about orthogonal, okay? Orthogonal is really just another way to say two vectors are perpendicular. So orthogonal and perpendicular essentially mean the same thing, but this is just orthogonal is used with vectors. So the vector u and the vector v are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. Let's digest that for a second. If we take u and v, and we find the dot product, and it's zero, that means the two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular. Now let's go back to this screen right here. What we're saying is this scenario. If you have the cosine theta of zero, that means we have a 90 degree angle or they're perpendicular to one another. So we can very simply just find the dot products. And if the dot product is zero, then we can say, yes, indeed, we have two vectors that are perpendicular. So let's start with U and V. Are they orthogonal? Well, the dot product is easy. Take the horizontal components, so 2 times 6 is 12. We're going to add to it negative 3 times 4, and that's negative 12. And so that means when we take the dot product and we get 0, are those orthogonal? And the answer is yes, meaning yes, they're perpendicular. So that's how you can tell if you have perpendicular vectors or orthogonal vectors. How can you tell if two vectors are parallel? Well, to find parallel is a little bit different. When you take their dot product, you will get one, okay? That's how you can tell they're perpend or parallel. That's this scenario. These are parallel, right? Because they go the same direction. Well, they can also be parallel if they go opposite directions. So if you multiply them together, if you get that dot product and you either get a positive one or a negative one, you know that they're parallel to each other. If you get a positive one, that means they're parallel and the same direction. If you get a negative one, they're parallel but in opposite directions. Whoops. So let's go back and try a couple of these scenarios, okay? Uh, slide back to here. Oops, wrong way. There we go. If two vectors are parallel, then one of them will be a multiple of the other. One will be a multiple of the other. So, we can look and see if their, their unit vectors are the same, or we can just check and see if one is a multiple of the other. So let's first look at this one. We have one five and three negative 15. If we take 
m and we have a constant that we multiply by and we get so some constant and we get 315 then we know they are parallel to each other so let's multiply these out so 3 times 1 is 3 3 times 5 is 15 so indeed those two are parallel to each other the other thing you can look at is you can actually look at the unit vector because we know that if even if you have a vector here that's small and another vector that's parallel to it that their unit vector will actually be the same so you can also look at the unit vectors so if we find that the magnitude of 1 5 that's just going to be the square root of 26 is the magnitude so you would have 1 divided by the square root 26 and 5 divided by the square root of 26 and that one will rationalize to root 26 over 26 and the second component will be 5 root 26 over 26 so there's its unit vector and then if we find the unit vector for this one let's see 3 squared plus 15 squared to find the magnitude that's going to give me 9 plus uh, what's 15 to 25 let's just crank it out yeah 225 and that's going to give me square root of 234. Now, I already know that 234 is probably divisible by 26, just based on the last problem. So let's divide it by 26. And sure enough, 9. So this is going to be 3 square root 26. So there's my magnitude of the second one. So let's write that unit vector. So we have 3 divided by root 20, uh, 3 root 26. And then 15 divided by 3 root 26. And that just simplifies to the 3's cancel. We have 1 over root 26 and 15 divided by 3 is 5 over root 26 well you can see they are indeed the same we can then just rationalize that to root 26 over 26 for the first horizontal component and for the vertical component you have 5 root 26 over 26 so they have the same unit vector and that's a second way to prove that the two um, that two vectors are parallel to each other. But of course the quick way is just to see if they're one's a multiple of the other. Okay, so let's try to decide which pair of vectors are parallel. Okay, if I take one tenth and I multiply by something to get four, I'd have to multiply by 40. So let's see, 6 times 40 is not 10. So, nope, these are not parallel. Okay, negative 1 half and negative 4, I have to find what I'd multiply. Well, I'd multiply negative 1 half by 4 to get 2. So let's multiply this one by 4, and I get negative 16. So that's no. Okay, 1 half times what gives me 2, and that's again a 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So, boom, those are parallel. Uh, 1 third times what gives me 2 times 6. And 4 times 6 is 24, not 15. So, no. So, the only pair that are parallel are these two. 1 half 4 is parallel to 2 16. You could probably even kind of sketch it to get an idea. Um, I, let's see if this is 5, 10, 15, 5, 10. I'll just make a scale so we can kind of see. Um, 1 half would be very tiny. And then 4. That would be a little tiny one here. And then 2 and 16 would be here. 
And yeah, those those look very parallel, like they're going the same direction. Okay, so let's try parallel, perpendicular, or neither. We know that if two vectors are parallel, one's a multiple of the other. If two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. And if it doesn't fall into either of these categories as a multiple or a dot product of zero, then it's neither. So let's look at each one. 4, 8, negative 2, negative 4. Well, let's see. If I multiplied 4, 8 by a negative 1 half, I would get negative 2, negative 4. So that means they have this, one's a multiple of the other. That means these are parallel to each other because I would just multiply 4, 8 by negative 1 half to get this vector. So they're parallel, but what's interesting is because I multiplied by a negative, they actually go in the opposite directions. So if I were to sketch these, 4, 8 would go this way, negative 2, negative 4 would go this way, and they are parallel, but they're in opposite directions because our scalar multiple is negative. Okay, let's look at the second pair. Let's see, 3 times what gives me a, uh, it doesn't look like we have a multiple, but let's check their dot product. So if the dot product is 0, then we know they're perpendicular. So 3 times 8 is 24. Let's add to it, because dot products you multiply and then add. Negative 4 times 6, that's negative 24. So the dot product is 0. Ooh, those are perpendicular, because the dot product is 0. Now let's look at this third scenario. 5 times what gives us 10? 2. 2 times 2 gives us positive 4. So they are not parallel because they are not um, multiple of the other. Let's check the dot product. 5 times 10 is 50 plus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 and their dot product is 42 not zero. So these are not perpendicular. So this pair is neither. And that's how you can tell parallel, perpendicular, or neither orthogonal. Okay, we're going to stop there. So we had a couple concepts in this video. The first concept was finding the angle between two vectors, and it's that cosine formula. The second set of, of the second topic was if vectors are parallel, meaning they're multiples of each other, if they're perpendicular, meaning their dot product is zero, or neither if it falls into neither one of the first two categories. Hope this video was helpful.